If you want to install a virtual machine on your host operating system as a guest, you're going to need to install some hypervisor software. Now, if all those terms seem a little bit odd to you, make sure you watch the video introduction to virtualization that I have. But assuming that you understand what virtualization is and you want to install some virtual machines on your computer, in this video, we're going to take a look at doing so with Microsoft's Hyper-V. You have a number of other choices for virtualization software. I use a product called VMware Workstation quite a bit, but you pay for that. Hyper-V is actually built into the Windows 10 and the Windows 11 operating system, and I think even Windows 8, but Windows 10 and Windows 11 Pro, if you have those and the educational version is the Pro version, you're going to be able to just activate Hyper-V. It's not as intuitive as a lot of things in Windows where you just say, turn it on or install this program. You actually have to go into a special area. Let's go have a look at installing Hyper-V on our Windows 11 machine as a demo. You could do it on Windows 10 as well. And how we can use the quick install to create a development environment in no time at all. Hyper-V is a virtualization platform that's included with the Windows operating system. As long as you're running an education version or a pro version, it's part of the operating system and doesn't require any additional purchases. Now, if you don't have those versions, check with your school if you're a student or check with your IT department if you're working to see whether or not you're entitled to get an upgrade because they can just give you the license key and you can upgrade to the pro version or the education version quite easily. So once you have that version installed or if you already have it installed, we're going to go into a search and we're going to type in turn on Windows features. So Windows turn Windows features on or off. And this is a little bit hidden. It's not like installing a program. These are features that are part of the operating system. There's actually a lot of really cool features in here. If you like this sort of video, hit the like, hit subscribe and comment down below because I can show you some of the other cool features we can install. So you can see here I have Hyper-V and the blue indicates that I've already gone in and installed some Hyper-V. So on this system, I installed the management tools because I was working with Hyper-V to take control of some servers that were running the Hyper-V platform. But what if I want to run the virtual machine completely on this computer? Well, then I'm going to need both the platform and the management tools. When I say OK to this, it will actually go, it'll search for the required files. And this is actually a service that requires me to reboot my system because virtualization is something that goes to the system level. So it applies the changes. And once those changes are done, it does require a reboot of the system. Let's go ahead and do that now. So now that my system has rebooted and Hyper-V is installed, if I just go into Hyper-V, this will open up the Hyper-V manager and the platform is installed in the background. Now you will notice that with Hyper-V, I also have the ability to do a quick create and let's do that. Notice that there are a whole number of different virtual machine images that are already here. So I could install, for example, an Ubuntu Linux and start playing around with Linux, a developer edition of Windows 11. So any development work I do will not affect my main system. That's a pretty cool feature, I think. So I'm going to go ahead to the Windows 11 developer edition and I'm going to create that virtual machine. It's going to begin downloading the image, which can take a little bit of time. Once the download finishes, it's a little bit tricky because it doesn't just pop into the virtual machine. But if I go into search again and I go back to the Hyper-V Quick Create, what I'll do is I'll now go in, I'll allow the user account control to say, yes, it's going to make changes to my system. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose that Windows Dev environment again. And now when I say create, it's already downloaded, so now it's going to verify the image. That's a little bit of a gotcha with the developer edition. It doesn't quickly just go right from the download directly into the create. You have to go back into quick create, but now it knows that it's there, so I have it available to me. It took a couple minutes for it to actually verify that image, and now it's going through the process of extracting the disk from that image archive that I just downloaded. So now the machine has been created. You can see it was successfully created from that image that we downloaded. I can connect to it and begin working with it, or I can edit the settings. The default settings might not be appropriate for me. So I'm going to go into the settings and you'll notice here that it tells me the hardware, the virtual hardware that I'm using, as well as some information here. So I'm going to go into the memory. This laptop that I have has quite a bit of memory. So I'm actually going to go in and give it, let's give it eight gigs of memory in here. It defaults to two gigs. So we'll apply that. And then I'm going to say, okay, and then we'll connect. 
because it's run it's uh, has the ability to run in the background so when i connect to it it's actually going to boot that development environment in the background and i will actually have this entire virtual environment let's just move this over here and so i'm going to start that machine and when I start the machine, it's going to boot an entire Windows 11 development environment that is separate from my host system so that I can start doing development without having to worry about compromising any of the settings on my main system. Here it is. Now I can go and change some things around the development environment in terms of the display configuration. I'm going to keep it as is and it's going to say, oh, there's a problem to connect to it right in enhanced mode. That's OK. We'll close that for now. I do have some other virtualization software on the computer here that I might want to install before I load my Hyper-V machine. I might want to uninstall it, but you can see here, we'll connect into it. And now I have a entire Windows environment. When I first go in, it notice that there's no prompt for a password in there. I can change that. Notice that I've got an evaluation edition that's available for 53 days. I will have to put in a Windows 11 key for that. Notice Visual Studio's already installed in here. Notice that I can do all sorts of cool development without affecting my host machine. So there we have a very easy way to install the Hyper-V software and make sure that we can run a guest operating system in our environment. Of course, we might not want to have just the development environment that's part of the quick install or the Linux versions that we saw as part of the quick install. Maybe we'd like to install our own operating system like Windows Server. If you're interested in doing that, then you're going to need to check out my next video where I show you how to create a Windows 2022 server using Hyper-V. This video is part of a course that I have on Skillshare. I put a link down below if you're interested in checking out Skillshare. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, but I do have courses over there. Check them out, links down below. And also if you like this video, hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and share with colleagues because that really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching.